Hello friends, in this video lecture, we are going to discuss another method to solve the load flow problem and that is fast decoupled method. So let us begin. So friends, in our last session, we have discussed the decoupled load flow method or the decoupled method to solve the load flow problem. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the extension of the same that is fast decoupled method. Friends, uh, we know that in Newton Raphson method, we have derived this relationship, an important relationship, inverse of Jacobian and function. Uh, let's say if we are at first iteration, then the function it will be in the beginning iteration, okay, or the assumed value. In Newton Raphson method, we start the method with uh, some assumptions. Okay, so that function is in that assumption value. Okay, it is with that assumed value. So you can see here, friends, uh, uh, we have to carry out carry out this uh, process for number of iteration. So what what is the problem here? We have to invert the Jacobian matrix those many times. Suppose if I am carrying out this iteration 100 times. So I need to invert this Jacobian matrix 100 times. So it becomes uh, time consuming. Okay. So what we can do is with the certain physical justifiable assumptions, we can make, or here in this method, we are going to make this Jacobian as constant. Okay. So what we are going to make is. Let us make this Jacobian constant with certain physical justifiable assumptions. Okay, so let us see what are those uh, physical justifiable assumptions uh, we can apply for. See, the very first thing it will be related to the relationship between the real power and the angle see in, uh, in previous lecture that was for decoupled method we have seen this part real power and angle this we have seen this uh, graph let us have a brief discussion here okay this is how this graph looks like okay we have that relationship as well power is equal to ev by x sine delta okay once the transmission line is constructed once we have tuned the parameters of the transmission line we cannot change the value of this reactance okay of course we always prefer to have this receiving end and sending in values of voltages nearer to one so now with this i can say that the real power is directly proportional to the sine of delta Okay, this angle where we operate the system. See, if you refer this graph, you can see this value. It is corresponding to P max. Okay, what is the P max here from this equation? I can say that P max is nothing but E V by X. But uh, physically or practically we do not operate our system at this angle where the power is maximum because see you can see here we are sitting on this tip a slight distortion in the angle may lead to system instability okay it may real power in the system may collapse okay it may go down okay so that is why what we prefer we prefer to operate in this region. We prefer to operate in this region. Okay. Uh, this region is supposed to be a linear region. We suppose we try to operate in this linear region. This, uh, why this portion is uh, linear? I can see. Uh, I can tell you that here. You see, this is this we are referring as sine of delta. Okay. If uh, delta is very small, the sine of delta will be very very small. Okay, if the delta is very small, then in that case, 
uh, sine of delta will be very small. We know that sine zero is zero. Okay. So as we go on increasing the value of delta in this region, in this region, uh, you can experience that the power will increase in proportion to the delta. In this region, where the value of the delta is very small, you can experience that real power will vary in proportion to the angle. Okay, that is why we prefer to operate at the system in this region only. Okay, particularly this in this uh, range up to it range up to 30 degree. Okay, we operate the system in this region only. Okay, to ensure the stability of the system. So what we can say here as this delta is very small, as it is a small value. Uh, with, the, with the help of this small value, we are going to make or we are going to give that physically justifiable assumptions. Okay, we need to make you know, approximations or assumptions which should be phys physically justifiable. Okay, then only we can get the results. Okay, then only we can uh, achieve the target. See now, as the delta is very small cos of this delta i k i can say it is nearly equal to 1 it is nearly equal to 1 okay <clears throat> suppose delta is 0 suppose delta is 0 we know that cos 0 is 1 okay or else if you put delta as 30 degree in that case also you can exp you can see that cos of 30 degree is uh, 0 0.86 let us make it uh, equal to approximately equal to 1 okay again sine of delta i k let us take this as 0 okay as delta is small sine of delta will be nearly equal to uh, delta okay for this value you see sine of delta is nearly equal to delta for small values of delta we are saying that delta is very small so let us approximate it to zero okay with with these two i can write here g of i j see this g is nothing but conductance g of i j sine delta i k will be very very less as compared to b i k okay this g i j b i k these are the conductance and susceptance okay we know that uh, that impedance we write this way r plus j x okay similarly we can write this y as g plus j b okay this is conductance susceptance okay again qi is will become very very less as compared to bii bi square okay so as the delta is very very small with this uh, we can make these assumptions which are physically justifiable okay with this approximation with this physical justifiable i must write here physical justifiable assumptions okay so with this physical justifiable assumptions i can write these terms h i k is equal to l i k and that is equal to v i v k g i K sine of del i minus del k minus b i k cos of del i minus del k. Let this be equation number one. Similarly, we can write n i k. 
is equal to minus of j i k that is equal to v i v k j i k cos of becomes cos of del i minus del k plus v i k sine of del i minus del k let this be equation number now you must be thinking that what is this h i k l i k n i k and j i k okay see we have used that uh, relationship in newton raphson method these are nothing but the elements of the jacobian matrix just to give you the idea let me write over here this this you know that's del p uh, del q is equal to the jacobian matrix we have written and that is equal to del delta and this del p okay here i can write these terms h n j n okay where this h and l are the diagonal elements of the jacobian matrix and n and j are the non diagonal elements okay we have used different terms while discussing the newton raphson method if you refer some books some of the authors they are using this notations for writing the jacobian matrix okay so this h i k l i k these are nothing but we we know that this h i k means h is a sub matrix in this jacobian matrix so h i k it means that these are the off diagonal elements of the sub matrix h and l i k is the off diagonal elements of the sub matrix l that we have discussed okay similarly we can uh, you can understand or you can apply the same understanding for n and j okay now the physically justifiable assumptions that we have made here if i apply this physical justifiable assumptions on equation number 1 and 2 how we can make that you see here this uh, cos of delta ik i have written delta ik is nothing but delta ik is nothing but simply delta i minus delta k okay so with this physical justifiable assumptions if i apply this assumptions on the equation number 1 and 2 i'll get this relationship 1 and 2 becomes now you see uh, we we'll keep this term here okay the first term the first equation h i k is equal to l i k let us write for that first h i k is equal to l i k let us write for this first okay uh, you see there sin of l i k is coming okay sin of l i k in that approximation we have approximated it to zero so this term goes okay so we we'll left with this minus b i k cos of this del i minus del k cos of that angle we have approximated it to equal to 1 we have approximated that cos of that angle to 1 okay so with this approximation i can write h i k is equal to l i k as it will become minus of v i v k v i k here i is not equal to k okay because the, uh, this will represent the off diagonal terms of h sub matrix h and sub matrix l okay since so this minus sign is coming from this the first term it goes zero here because sign of this angle it becomes zero so whole thing will become zero v i v k will remain as it is this minus term so minus is coming from this side v i k we have cos of uh, this angle it is going to, it is going to become 1 okay again now you can see that here uh, this h i k and l i k in this uh, we are getting these terms equal to this voltage v i voltage at i bus voltage at k bus v k okay now that v i k okay it is the susceptance between i and k bus we can refer this way now you see that the voltage we always try to keep in the system 
nearly equal to 1.0 per unit okay or else uh, we have the range we can have the voltage in this range 0.95 per unit to 1.05 per unit it is the permissible range for the voltage we don't go uh, the voltage we don't let the voltage to go beyond this band okay so i can say that here the vi vk these are nearly equal to one per unit so this term hik and lik is coming equal to just bik only the susceptance okay similarly we can write the same thing for hii and lii how we can write that that will give us the diagonal terms of h and i sub matrices it will be simply minus of this i and k will be equal to uh, will be same now so can i write bi into bi only into bii here i is equal to k okay so we'll get this term as bii into bi square again you can see here these terms uh, in these terms also voltage is coming but we know that physically or practically we keep the voltage near to 1.0 per unit or in this range okay we don't let voltage to vary uh, very high okay variation we don't allow we are we have the very limited band for the voltage okay so now these elements they are depending on this susceptance okay this beta so i can say that here with uh, with this approximation with this approximation furthermore what we can do in decoupled method we have already approximated these terms to zero we already approximated these terms to zero if we apply the uh, the approximation that we have considered in this uh, in this concept we have to deal with only h and l okay and that too we are finding that the terms the sub matrices h and l are going constant are becoming constant why it is so because they are now only been depending on this bik or bii voltage we nearly keep it to 1.0 per unit so with this i can say that my jacobian matrix has become constant now okay so we have achieved to make the jacobian matrix as constant as the jacobian matrix has become constant so uh, the we don't need to invert this in all the iterations okay its value will remain same for all the iteration so with this our method will become faster okay so we can use this method where we need a results of, uh, in short period of time okay so this was regarding fast decoupled method thank you very much